merci. Et euh, je commence aussi par remercier... Euh, Thank you very much. I'll start by thanking IOM, Mr. Swing, who, who has always had the ability and possibility of organizing these uh, conferences, which are very interesting. My experience uh, with IOM started a long time ago when I started a campaign for uh, giving value to highly qualified migrants uh, with my doctor a colleague. I therefore started with IOM and have had a good collaboration with the organization. My story as a migrant started in 1983. Uh, what I've heard is very touching and that uh, encourages me because I realize that we're not alone. There are lots of us with the same kind of experience. And what I'm happy about is that we can come together and exchange our experiences. So I arrived in Italy uh, in 1983 at 19 years old. I was 19 years old with uh, my baccalaureate. My dream was to become a doctor. Doctor. From I was a child, I'd always dreamt of becoming a doctor to be able to help the weakest, to help people who were the neediest. I was determined not to, uh, to divert from this objective. I needed to do that. And this is the only dream I had. Kinshasa, which was 2,000 kilometers away from where I was born, I had the only university with was the only university with the, the faculty of medicine. However, I could not uh, register there. I was uh, born in Kambowe, in the Katanga, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and 200 kilometers away, I spent my childhood in Lumumbashi. The opportunity to live out my dream uh, started when I, I got a scholarship from the diocese and it was a scholarship to be taken up abroad. And, but I didn't have the choice of country. I didn't know where to go. My aim was to be able to just study medicine. And so I was finally able to have a scholarship to study uh, medicine. This was Italy. I didn't know the, the country. It didn't matter that I didn't know the language, but I knew that I had to become a doctor. I remember what my mother said to me when I was leaving. She said, as long as you haven't found what you're looking for, don't turn back. Continue. Don't stop. Even if you receive bad news from the family, be strong. Your work could save lives one day. Her words accompanied me over these years and encouraged me in difficult moments. I had a three-month visa to be re renewed after registering at the university, and I didn't manage to, to register for the university because my plane got to Rome late. And uh, so sometimes destiny is not what we imagine. It, it can change. So I realized that I couldn't register at the university. The, uh, the plane arrived a day late, and so I couldn't take up the scholarship any longer. In spite of all these difficulties, I never once thought of going back to my country of origin, because my aim was to be able to study. I didn't at all imagine uh, abandoning my project. I had to wait for a year before I could register again, and so I had no money. I was not registered, and so I was alone in a country that uh, I didn't know at all. I found a priest who was a refugee, a political a Hungarian political refugee. He didn't know me. The concierge uh, made a mistake and didn't call the priest uh, that I wanted. He called the other priest who had more or less the same name, Father Bekesh, who was Hungarian and who had never had contact with uh, uh, Africans, had never had a contact with other migrants. And Mr. Bekesh helped me a lot because he started, he found me a place. And I remember that I changed uh, accommodation because I had no choice. I had nothing to eat. And it was thanks to uh, Father Bekesh who helped me to be able to find my feet. When I could, I started to attend uh, classes at the university. 
I taught myself, and I found a way of understanding the language. That was the first problem. I needed to learn the language. I needed to make myself understood. I needed to understand what was also happening in the host country. I really had moments of great solitude, and I remember that it was uh, books, uh, faith, and perseverance which really helped me. The absence of a place of meeting other people was a great handicap. handicap. There was no strategy for welcoming migrants except for what was being done voluntarily. And even today, we don't give enough importance to these assembly points where uh, migrants and countries from the host countries can meet. They're, all that have been created are detention centers, and this is something we need to think about. So migrants are meeting in closed centers rather than in centers that are open to the population uh, to be able to meet with the local population. I chose a private and prestigious university because I wanted to have an impeccable training. I knew I had no money. And I said, well, this is not going to prevent me from having excellent training because this is what I can give myself. And this is what I, this is what will help me to offer better service to sick people. So I worked in the evening on the weekends and during the holidays in order to pay for my studies. But I'm very happy because I, I, I made it to the end. So I ended, I finished a completed university in six years. Uh, this was the duration of the program. I don't know how I did it, but I finished it in six years. And I obtained my doctorate in medicine. And now I am a specialist in ophthalmology. Italian law did not allow me to convert my, my uh, permit, a uh, student permit, into a working per a work permit and carry out my profession. Uh, the conversion from one category to the next of your permit is not automatic. You have to go back to your country of origin without any guarantee. Uh, I didn't want to pass by this. Uh, I didn't want to take up this option. I was able, uh, therefore, to uh, join to, to ex uh, carry out my profession. And it was the fall of the Berlin Wall that uh, created a change. Uh, this was the beginning of a political instability and conflicts in my current country of origin. I really wanted to go back to my country of origin, but I stayed in Italy in spite of all the difficulties imposed by the law, especially for migrant workers. For two years, I couldn't uh, work as a doctor. Even if I got distinctions, I couldn't access uh, public positions or participate in competitions because I wasn't an Italian citizen. I was afraid of taking on Italian nationality. And this is something that all migrants go through, the fear of changing your nationality. And it's a fear of losing your identity and your roots. And I think it was over time that I understood. I understood that this was where my life was. My life was in Italy. And uh, that helped me to take that step, that difficult step. And even when I had Italian uh, nationality, I always was in second place because the first positions were reserved for others and I couldn't get certain positions in hospitals. It was not a question of competence but of uh, social class. I understood the, the, the importance of the culture of the country of origin. I started to work in missionary hospitals in Africa, in uh, university centers centers and in the training of social operators there. I had a strong link between my profession and social sector, and this is how I got involved in politics for several years. I was responsible for the African diaspora in Italy and moved towards a project of the creation of the sixth virtual region of the African Union, which has not led to any concrete results. My aim wasn't only to take care of bodies and sick people, 
people but to be involved in a wider uh, perspective. My neighbor was not only migrants and other Congolese, but people. I realized that people were important. I started my political career with the uh, left-wing Democrats at the beginning at the local level, and then I got to national parliament. My participation in politics helped me to be able to observe, to listen, and share without imposing my vision of things. I considered the fundamental uh, rights of people, independent of color, of the color of their skin, religion, and citizenship. And I think this is the point of departure for any political project. Uh, and this has been said even in Strasbourg. The, the profession, uh, the medical profession has helped me. This has allowed me to maintain contact with people and with reality. My being a woman, my profession, my being a migrant, and my political role have allowed me to see the reality around me uh, with, in a dynamic and, and far-reaching uh, manner. Civil society is, is, is ready and available. We need to listen and respect them by making the necessary uh, instruments necessary. I realized that it was important to deal with the phenomenon and migratory flows. This is at the center of all political discussion relating to uh, labor, education, and environment. We must always see this as an added value for uh, preparing and designing integration policies. Uh, we don't see the migrant as a source of wealth and, and richness for the uh, host uh, 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 society. And this is the case in Italy with the law on immigration. Uh, this uh, fact of being a migrant labor, uh, this has really uh, weakened the status of, uh, of many uh, persons, especially in this period of crisis. Now, the beginning of integration begins with the active participation of migrants in the in the politics and social life of their country. I have come to the parliament and now minister, minister of integration. I'm the first black minister in the history of Italy. The citizens of Italy believed in my, in my fight. And I was voted for by 93,000 persons who voted for me. Oh, during the last uh, elections in 2014. And this has brought me to the level of, of Europe, to the European level. I, I, my commitment to Europe is even broader. And, a package of directives over the years have helped to come up with a European policy on asylum. asylum. Uh, the 28 countries, unfortunately, do not share the same objectives. During my mandate in the government, I personally uh, attended to persons uh, who uh, lost persons in the Lampedusa crisis. And I was there present during all these operations with my colleagues. We set up the Mare Nostrum, uh, which has not come up with a, uh, an adequate response in the European Union. And I'd like to stress this, because we haven't had an efficient response with regard to migration policy. And I think that we cannot continue to give uh, responses which only deal with emergencies, which only deal with the moment. But we need to have a long-term policy. And to replace Mare Nostrum, we need to have a project which changes the, the, the objectives of Frontex. This is an agency which controls borders as well as the seas. And this is my commitment. I have a strong commitment uh, to the European Parliament to work on migration, to work on asylum, to review the Dublin uh, regulations, because this is the problem faced by people who enter into all European countries. We need to move, work on free movement, the possibility for each person to be able to choose 
the country where they want to settle and uh, choose as their place of uh, residence. We need to look at asylum policy, the Dublin uh, 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 policy, as well as look at borders. We can work on this with humanitarian organizations such as IOM and UNHCR. We need to anticipate these things and have uh, uh, procedures for protecting persons. And the Pope reminded us of this because the Mediterranean should not become a cemetery. We need to have a collective awareness from a col uh, uh, cultural point of view. And so I will end by saying, by talking about the cultural aspect, we need to create col uh, collective uh, awareness of hate speech and discrimination. This is something that I started when I was a minister with the Rome Declaration. This is something that you can find that, that is easily accessible and which condemns uh, hate speech. The creation of a, a working group, which I'm setting up in the European Parliament, which needs to work on racism, xenophobia, fighting against racism, xenophobia, and to make it understood that diversity, there is there is richness in diversity. It's not a problem. I am all, I continue to be a victim, and I'd like to recall this because I'm all I continue to be a victim of this hate speech with the vice uh, uh, chair of uh, president of the parliament. Uh, I am there at the, with him, and I haven't had a lot of support. And I am in the courts, before the courts with him. Instead of making a pronouncement on this hate speech, the court says that it is not in a position to take a position on the uh, Calderoli's uh, speech. Everything needs to be brought before the parliament and the Senate needs to decide whether this is normal political speech or whether it amounts to insults. And I really find this sad for politics because politics must distinguish where the respect for a person begins and what insult means. In spite of that, I said I will not stop. I will continue. I'll, I will go on. But politics needs to find its identity, needs to uh, have respect, find respect for people. I am in a protection program. I can't move about uh, freely. I, I always have bodyguards around me, and uh, I wouldn't want somebody else to have the same experience. My commitment with regard to Africa and the European Parliament, I am vice president of the ACP, uh, president of the Forum for ACP Women, stressing access to education and training and especially building the capacity of women in order to have a leadership class among women who will be able to defend themselves not as victims but as leaders who can be responsible for themselves and to be leader. It's not easy to take the lead. I heard the presentation before me. It's not easy to be a symbol and to be in the lead. And we need to be constantly fighting. And I recall the words of Martin Luther King. We shouldn't look at the color, the, the, the color of somebody's skin, but people's ability. Efforts have been made for me to leave aside my passion and so that I would uh, just uh, not be able to continue. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this for my